can hold certain boundaries really easily and other ones I have to kind of acquiesce to say what's the more important thing here. So we have other boundaries to talk about, like professional demeanor, professional relationships, Mm -hmm. professional encounters. We're picking up here right where we left off in the last episode. So if we moved over specifically to talking about a workplace setting, the professional setting, I think let's just carry on a little bit more with time because there's time and then there's the expectations of delivery. So if you're in a a workplace situation and somebody has expectations of you around uh, given the duration of the work that you're going to have to do to meet a particular time frame or date, whatever it might be, there's a notion there that we have to be aware of our personal like this gentleman in his lunch, protecting Mm -hmm. that, his self-care, and the notion that, okay, my boss has expectations of me, and they're going to set some time delivery standards around which or within which I need to operate. Being aware of the fact that I might want this time from you in the workplace, but it may not map to what you can give me in the workplace we get back into this whole negotiation about how do we manage these boundaries. Yeah, so what goes on in my head, is that a boundary? Is that a priority? Is that really what is that? Is that really a boundary? Mm -hmm. Or is it I'm not sure how to manage my work? Is it I have too many priorities? So that kind of goes through my head a little bit with that one. And so let's carry it. We could a little bit further on that. So let's say it is a thing about priority. Okay, who sets that? So in this particular case, how many times have those of us who've been in the workplace heard some lament that goes like, okay, you want your rush job to come in and be ahead of the three other rush jobs I have right now. I I need somebody to help me understand which one of these rush jobs isn't as rush as the one that you're trying to bring me. Right. That would be a that would be an issue of priority, but also of you got just we are limited in our capacity as individuals to be able to do stuff. So yeah, it's a priority, but there's also this notion that I, you know I can't do it. I can't find more than 24 hours in a day. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter how much you prioritize it. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So if your boundary is I'm not going to work past five o'clock and this requires you to work till eight o'clock, then that's a boundary conversation. Mm -hmm. If it's I just don't know, I don't know what to work on. I have too many. You've given me too many assignments. I would say that's probably not a boundary Mm -hmm. issue. That's more of a conversation around priorities and what's the most important thing to be doing and what can what can be postponed or. So I, I differentiate those a little bit. That's a, I think it's a great differentiation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> so we have other boundaries to talk about, like professional demeanor, professional relationships, yeah. professional encounters. Yeah. I don't date people in the workplace. Long held boundary that I've had just a rule <laughs> that is a I don't even know if it's a boundary for me that is a rule <laughs> it does not get violated <laughs> I just I just don't mm-hmm. I just don't think that's a place for it um I've seen so many of my friends have done it and I've seen the fallout mm-hmm. that happens from mm-hmm. it um so for me that's a professional boundary that I just don't date people I work with um but I think about I remember when I first started my career I can curse with the best of them and my dad always saying you can't talk like that in the workplace <laughs> so, so but I'm on the platform <laughs> right right <laughs> so I pick and choose where it may or may not be appropriate to drop an f-bomb every once in a while <laughs> but I would never do it you know in, in certain settings so there's some professionalism around the language I use in the workplace that I clearly do not have in my personal life <laughs> And I try my best on the podcast so that we don't have to put an E for explicit language on our podcast. (laughs) For mature audiences only. (laughs) 
Okay, so from a, the personal relationships in the professional setting, then there's the notion that in the work setting, you have relationships with the people you work with. Absolutely. And some of them you're with every day, and some of them you meet in planned or even unplanned ad hoc yeah. get-togethers about meetings, the hallway conversations, whatever. But there's a, an element of respect and self-care one must exercise for self and the other person that might be engaged in this professional conversation about what's appropriate. And this is another level of negotiation and contracting we do, but, does, but oftentimes is not spoken. Right. So we get back to what we were talking Both about functions. before. Yes. <laughs> we talk about the un, unspoken expectations mm -hmm. about what's right and wrong, and that gets violated. So there's this tender dance that goes on. Yeah. But, but it, it's got to be out of mutual respect, which we talked about uh, a couple months back. So just having appropriate levels of exchange with the people with whom you work. And if you're a leader, so very important to demonstrate that respect equally. Yeah. I had occasion years ago, one of the supervisors that worked for me sent out an ill-considered blonde joke email mm. to members of his team, and he included me. So I was an anomaly as a female leader in that capacity. Right. And I saw this come across, and I'm thinking, oh, no, no, no. So I had to walk down. I chose to walk down and just dropped in on him and said, I just wanted to talk about that email you just sent, and he, he just hung his head. He knew right away. He, he, knew, he probably knew as it was going send <laughs> or enter at that point. Yeah. You know, and, and he had women that worked for him who happened to also be blonde. And it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to be able to, number one, understand what was it that made that okay. And then what are the reparations you could make? Because what you've just demonstrated by that simple act was a disrespect and a disregard. And so he ended up doing what I would have expected him to do, which was to apologize to the entire distribution list of people. Because you can't know. You send an email, you can't know where it's gone. Who else has seen it? Where right. else did it go? But yeah. to at least to be able to address it. With it. Yeah. It's about respect. And we've talked about this. Mm hmm We've talked about mutual respect and listening and leaning in and understanding and empathy and triggers and all of that stuff. And it comes down to these, there are these boundaries and we have to recognize and respect them. We have to manage them. So I want to just point out that you had a boundary around jokes, around blonde women, and you did something about it. Mm -hmm. How many times, particularly as women, do we just let it go? Oh, he was just joking. That's just how he is. He didn't mean anything by it. And we come up with all these excuses because we'd rather sit in our own discomfort than go address it. That would be interesting to think about it. From the, If there had been, I'm starting this off like I don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I used up all my adult words today. I used today. up all my words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. So what would be the difference if, as it was that case, I was the leader and as a woman and the perpetrator, shall we say, <laughs> was a man mm -hmm. and I approached him through respectfully and the, the sole purpose of asking for consideration of what was what were the circumstances and he didn't need to tell me mm -hmm. it was about him knowing him understanding well if the roles were reversed so if <clears throat> excuse me 
if I had been the one, or if my boss had been the one to send the message and was a male, mm-hmm. and I happened to be a blonde woman who was on the receiving end of it in this particular case, what would I have done? And back then, we're talking last century. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's <laughs> <laughs> it was in the late 1900s. <laughs> I hate being able to say that. 1922. <laughs> no, late. <laughs> this would have been actually around 1998, somewhere around in there, before the Y2K. Anyway, just it's just interesting, depending on the roles. Yeah. And but your point you, being, you would have still addressed it. I, well, I probably would have. Yeah. <laughs> Because you're a rabble rouser. I am. But, in fact, I did have an opportunity to do that now that you remind me. But so many people would rather sit in their own discomfort than have an uncomfortable conversation. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want them to think poorly of me. I don't want them to think I can't take a joke. Yeah, exactly. There's a, a million excuses that could go through your head of why you shouldn't address it. But here's why you should. Because if you don't, it's going to happen again. Exactly. And you're going to continue to be uncomfortable. It's going to happen again, and you're going to be uncomfortable. It's going to happen again, and you're going to be uncomfortable. And it's going to happen again, and you're probably going to lose your mind. And then go hog wire crazy on the person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> instead said, of what? Instead of that first time just saying, hey, I didn't particularly care for that email. What was your intent? Because here's the intent. It ha- here, here's what I perceive your intent to be. It's a, it's a two-minute conversation, mm-hmm. and that awkwardness and uncomfortableness is done. But by not addressing it, it goes on and on and on and on and on. I want to hang on to that for just a moment because it's a super important point about ownership. Because, and what you said was, I had an issue with the email you just sent. It wasn't, you just pissed me off because you sent this really ill-advised email. You, you, you. No, I did not appreciate that. What was your intent? Because this is how it came across to me. Not what you made me feel. This is how it, the act, not you. This is how the act, the words, the whatever came across to me. Uh, there's an opportunity for them to learn or for me to learn what was going on. Right, because our boundaries are about us. It's not about anybody else. We have to own that. Yeah. It's like, you can't make me feel something I do not choose to feel. Exactly. Yeah, but I think that's a really important distinction to remember is that your boundaries are about you. They're not about anybody else. Mm-hmm. They're about you, your values, what matters to you. It's about your self-care it's what keeps you safe and keeps you in the game. It's not about anybody else. I remember one time I was having a conversation with a gentleman who I worked for, and it was maybe February or March, and he said something about it looked like it was like I was out of vacation time. <laughs> I have four weeks of vacation time. What are you talking about? What I didn't know at the time was that he had looked at the schedule, and I had most of my vacation days scheduled because I would schedule them out. I want to take time off at Christmas. I want to take time off at Thanksgiving. I want to take a couple extra days at, at, in the around my birthday, whatever. And so he said I was out of vacation. It bothered me all weekend because I didn't. It, it didn't address it right then and there because he said it in front of a group of people. My time is important to me. <laughs> So Monday morning, I called him and I said, hey, can I check something out with you? When you said I was almost out of vacation, what did you mean? And he laughed and he said, what are you talking about? I said, on Friday at our team meeting, you said that most of us were almost out of vacation. I have three and a half weeks of vacation left. <laughs> I haven't taken any. I've only taken a few days. And he said, no, I, I looked at the vacation schedule and I just want to make sure you're going to have enough time to do the things that you want to do. Because you were talking about vacation. I said, it's already scheduled. And he said, oh, okay. We just had such a miscommunication. I'm over here spending my weekend thinking, oh, my God, what did he do? (laughs) Take my vacation time away from me? And all he meant was, it looks like you have your time already scheduled out. Just make sure you're not 
overextending or right. whatever. It, but it was so funny that there was this big story in my head thinking he's lost his mind. I, what, are you taking my vacation time away from me? Did you mark down vacation that I didn't take? What's mm-hmm. going on? Mm-hmm. But instead of accusing him of anything, all I said was, can I check something out with you? When you said this, what did you mean? And he called me later that week and said, I want to tell you, I really appreciate how you came to me with that conversation. Because someone else on the team had the same issue and did not handle it that way. Okay. <laughs> came in very accusatory. What are you talking about? You're, you, don't, you don't know anything. Whereas I was like, hey, can I just check this out with you? <laughs> and that's the point, right? It's to make sure you're clear on the facts of the matter before you spin the story. Yeah. And get caught up in in the river, the torrent that comes from that. Mm. Yeah, you know th- those boundaries are important, and it's important that we're able to, when they're violated by somebody else, we check it out with them and try to understand, and that we don't violate our own boundaries, professional or personal. Well, that sounds like a wrap. (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you listening, and we will see you next time. I'm Doc Shelley. I'm Carla. Don't forget to comment. We'd love to hear what you're thinking about what you're hearing. Till next time. Your boundaries are about you. They're not about anybody else. They're about you, your values, what matters to you. It's about your self-care. It's what keeps you safe and keeps you in the game. 